Welcome to our discussion of gradient and gradient descent. You see that we are really in a geography class. Yeah, well, what's the switch? So, in the bottom we have a waterfall. It is the second highest waterfall in Canada. It is called Takakaw Falls. It falls 373 meters. Which Today is I've learned. 1,200 feet. It's pretty steep and I've been there and you got to cover your ears because it's real loud. I and can imagine. And often if the wind's blowing you better wear a raincoat from the Ooh. spray. So let's look at this waterfall. You can see the river going in the topographic map and I've got a question for Sam. Mm -hmm. uh, Sam you can see the river's painted colored blue, dark blue in the middle of the figure, yeah. and there are, green, are gray brown lines, very thin, contour mm. lines spaced 40 meters apart. Okay. So there's the setup for the problem. Now, tell me where the waterfall is. Mm. Well, you have all the contour lines, uh, and I guess the more compact they are, the steeper. Uh, uh, the terrain there is. So I would make a guess and say right around here. Yeah, and in fact if we look we can see, do you want to write it with your pen sort of sketch out the two contour lines in that area? Just roughly, we know where they go. So they're really close. They're back. So it's about this distance and then if you use the legend in the bottom of the picture it's about four meters. Uh, roughly. Uh, roughly, uh, yeah, less than 10, definitely. So the, five meters apart or so, uh, with a drop of uh, 40 meters. Yeah, so that's a slope of eight. That's really steep. Mm. So you can see that the, uh, certainly, we have been able to map the waterfall uh, by looking at how close the contour lines are spaced. Mm -hmm. And if they were right on top of each other, we would have a sheer cliff. Mm -hmm. Now, the other question is the river. If you look at the river, what can you say about how the river crosses those contour lines? Mm, well, you start there and go... Okay, well, they, they usually cross uh, fairly close to uh, perpendicularly yeah, like, uh, to the contour line. Sure, like if you look up here, you can see that the river goes right, right down almost, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that the angle between the river and this contour line is pretty close to 90 degrees. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, why isn't it exactly 90 degrees? Well, I guess the, the terrain itself uh, might have rocks uh, or other things uh, in, in, in the local area, and the water itself has uh, some momentum coming down, so that might affect the, the direction a little. Yeah, so in the, in, the, in the microscopic view, it'll have some little kinks. Mm -hmm, but if mm -hmm. you actually if you took, zoom out far enough, then if I you guess zoom out far, you'll it. see that the river always cuts the contour at 90 degrees. So the river also, from physics, is going to find the fastest way down mm -hmm. or find the steepest slope. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's a great introduction to the idea of gradient. So let's do it here very simply. Well, we'll take function f, x, y. So for every x and y, we get a value f. That's called a scalar field. And mm. the topographic map is a 2D representation of that scalar field. Mm. So in the, this case, the altitude at each point? The altitude at each point. Mm. So altitude is constant on a contour line. Mm -hmm. And so we can see here where we have the waterfall, the contour lines are real close, but the, the altitude drops 40 meters. Mm -hmm. And the river gives us a marker of the steepest slope, which cuts the contour lines at 90 degrees. Let's actually look and see how that works. I'm going to do a bit of calculus here, use the formula for differentials and what we know about partial derivatives.
There it is. That's the change of the height when we move a little bit in the x direction and mm -hmm. a little bit on the, in the y direction. Mm -hmm. Let's say we're sitting on a contour of constant height and we're okay. walking. Walking on the contour? We're walking along the contour, so the yeah. height doesn't change. Yeah. And let's say that that contour is, in, move, is set in the y direction. Okay. So we're moving in the y direction, x is constant, contour doesn't change, that means the height as we move along y is going to be the same, so its change is going to be zero. Yeah. So that means if we pick a walking direction on a contour line, our height doesn't change and df will be zero. Mm -hmm. Now, which direction should we pick so that we drop away down the slope the fastest? Well, we know the answer. The river gave us the answer. Perpendicular to the contour line. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we could have a whole set, of, if we're on a fixed contour line, we could have a whole set of directions. This one, this one, this one. Ah, that's the one I don't want to ski on. That's the one that's steepest. And that turns out to be in the direction of what's called the gradient. The gradient gives us the maximum rate of descent. How's that possible? Well, it's possible when we look at this map and this map. We look at this. This is really cool. You see, we got dx and, and dx and dy and dy. So we got a repeated index. Mm -hmm. That means we can write it as a dot product. Yeah. All right. So now this is a vector. So we're going to write it like this. Um, This is the dot okay. product. We just know what the gradient is. It's a mm -hmm. vector that has components df, dx, and df, dy. Mm -hmm. And dr is uh, dx i hat plus dy j hat. I'll put that in. OK. So now, df equals gradient f dot dr. If dr is moving along a contour line mm -hmm. that's perpendicular by our geographic analysis to, it, to the gradient, then it's a zero. Your then it's height zero. Doesn't change. The height doesn't change. <clears throat> so that means gradient f then would be perpendicular to dr. Mm -hmm. If dr is moving in the same direction as the gradient, we get the maximum, the maximum decrease mm -hmm. in the function f. Mm -hmm. So gradient f gives us the maximum rate. It's actually the way we've defined it as positive is ascent. Descent would just be the negative of that. So, okay, yeah. so descent is proportional to minus gradient of f. So returning to this, we can see that this gradient of f gives us a directionality, if we make it a unit vector, mm -hmm. on which direction we should move so that we get the maximum descent. And that's the key point. And we use that in geometrical analysis, like finding the minimum of a function that's given by a bowl. Mm. That's one use. But in E and M, where do we find the negative gradient? Uh, part of the Maxwell's equation, one of the laws. Yeah, so electric field in Maxwell, you get an increase in the force field when your potential is reduced. Mm. So in Maxwell's equations, Here's a direct application of the gradient.